Today we are going to fact check the fact checkers. Today we are going to expose the fact checkers with truth and justice. And today we are going to demand accountability and an honest answer from the fact checkers and these social media organizations. Because I have caught Facebook lying and destroying my page over their mistakes. I have caught Instagram, which is owned by Meta or Facebook, working with a fact check organization out of France. What if I told you that the fact checkers answered my email and exposed themselves and how they operate to me in an email? What if I told you I was gonna read that email aloud today and show the entire world exactly how the fact checkers operate? I have it, you're gonna wanna see it. Because their tactics involve referencing some of your comments and saying, well, if you get thousands of comments and some of your comment users post conspiracy theories, then you're responsible for what people say in the comments. No, really. This is how pathetic and desperate these fact checkers are. And they've exposed themselves. And I'm going to read you exactly what they said in the email. They seem to claim that even though my Instagram video was 100% true, they're allowed to rate it false if I advertise in the comment section to go watch a longer video. And in that longer video, they stalk it and reference things I said in that. But the craziest part is I caught them lying about that too. They're wrong. I can prove it. We're going to explore it in this video. We are going to expose these dishonest liars for refusing to correct themselves. And I will prove that that video that they rated false was true. And I will also expose YouTube who has suspended my account for a week and they won't even tell me which part of the video was the error. And the BS reason that they suspended my account is they said YouTube doesn't allow claims about COVID-19 vaccinations that contradict expert consensus from local health authorities or World Health Organization, which is weird because my local health authorities and the World Health Organization don't always agree. Here's the Miami Herald reporting, do healthy children need COVID vaccine boosters? The CDC and the World Health Organization disagree. Will they dare suspend the account of the CDC for disagreeing with the WHO? Because when it came to adolescent boosters, the CDC was bullish on them. And in January, the same month that the CDC was pushing them, the World Health Organization said, they don't see the evidence for it. But of course YouTube would never censor the CDC and they don't care if the World Health Organization is wrong. But you peasant, don't you dare disagree with them. Now before I really start my exposure, do you notice how if you tell the truth about the vaccine and you tell the truth about Big Pharma, you're more likely to get censored than if you lie in favor of Big Pharma? Rochelle Walensky, the director of the CDC, Joe Biden and Rachel Maddow all made what are now known to be false statements. We're not in a position where we think that any virus, including the Delta virus, which is much more transmissible and more deadly in terms of non-unvaccinated people, the, vi the, the, the various shots that people are getting now cover that. They're, they're, you're okay. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Our data from the CDC today suggests, um, you know, that, that vaccinated people do not carry the virus, don't get sick, um, and, and that it's not just in the clinical trials, but it's also in real world data. Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. The virus does not infect them. The virus cannot then use that person to go anywhere else. Which obviously misled millions of people, but they don't get punished, do they? Now let's really take a dive into every single fact check and expose the hell out of them. Let's start with Facebook because it's so easy, because they're so wrong, so dishonest, and their customer service is doo-doo. It seems like I have to make a video like this in order to get a response. During the pandemic, I posted this to Facebook. It was Ron DeSantis literally quoting the CD with a cdc.government website. And this was back then, so I don't know if it's still accurate, but at the time, he said, CDC recently updated estimated infection fatality rates for COVID. Here are the updated survival rates by age group. And then he named them directly quoting the CDC. Now, Facebook covered this up and punished my account and said false information. The same information was checked in another post by independent fact checkers. What? How can quoting CDC be a violation of the fact checkers? Well, the imbeciles at Lead Stories 
News fact-checked it, and it says, fact check: the CDC did not declare COVID less fatal than flu when revising public health disaster plans. What? Where did I say that? I never made the claim that they're saying my post said. I literally just posted raw facts from the CDC. And do you notice they're threatening me at the bottom of that post? To fight false news, Facebook reduces the distribution of misleading content while also showing additional reporting on the same topic. Pages and websites that repeatedly publish or share misleading content will see their overall distribution reduced, which happened to me, their ability to monetize and advertise removed, and their ability to register as a news page removed. Almost all of these threats happened to me. They cut out my funding for a while. They cut my reach for a while. It probably is still cut for their mistake. But who can I call? Who can I email? I reach out to the fact checkers. They don't even care. They're so smug. They're so dishonest. How are you getting away with this, Facebook? How are you getting away with this lead stories? It gets worse. I harmlessly posted a screenshot from the New York Times and somebody at Fox News. The New York Times said advice on airborne virus transmission vanishes from CDC website. And Rick Leventhal from Fox just reported the actual CDC statistics at the time. I mean, Fox News and the New York Times? That's it? Same fact check. Are your AI algorithms crappy? Do you just have artificial intelligence scanning posts and they constantly make mistakes? Or do you have humans making these mistakes? Either way, when I point out to the humans that the AI made a mistake or that another human made a mistake, they just don't care. It's like they think they're little dictators and authoritarians. Oh, who cares? I mean, we control your information now. We control your reach. We can destroy your whole career and take tens of thousands of dollars away from you overnight. Be wrong about it. But who's gonna fact check the fact checkers? Who's gonna hold them accountable? It gets much, much worse. I'm going to expose you frauds on every single platform that you've lied about me on and you have to answer to the public and this is my question before i move on do you know you're lying do you know you're dishonest do you know you're sloppy do you know that you're ruining a lot of people's lives and careers who don't deserve it do you know you're making mistakes do you know that you're sucking away tens of thousands upon millions of dollars from people when you're wrong do you understand what you're doing do you know that or do you think you're doing the right thing I'm not sure, but either way, I'm proving to you now, without a shadow of a doubt, that you keep making these mistakes and taking away my stuff and taking away my reach that I've worked for over a decade to build. No label, no mass media, all hard work and dedication. I was broke through my 20s. I had no car. I worked my ass off to make it big on Facebook. I worked my ass off to make it big on YouTube and to provide for myself and to tell the truth to people since mainstream media is so dishonest and this is how you reward me you take away all my stuff all my reach my monetization when you're making the mistake on facebook mark zuckerberg how do you allow this to happen on your platform you guys are horrible now you're evil who cares if you're building a vr set for the metaverse you treat humans like garbage or your staff treats humans like absolute garbage. Your customer service is pathetic, non-existent. And when they answer, they're smug. They don't care when they're wrong, but I'm going to make you care when they're wrong. Cause this is only the tip of the iceberg of how dishonest, infactual and incorrect these fact checkers are who act like authoritarians on your platform who's fact checking the fact checkers i am and i'm not done so on instagram i made this 100 percent true video that i'm about to play and you could see do the research yourself it's 100 percent factually true about monkeypox and this fictional monkeypox simulation they did a year prior that i just found fascinating and newsworthy take a look now that monkeypox is all over the news you might find it fascinating that there was a monkey pox pandemic fictional simulation in March of 2021, over a year ago, in which a global security organization founded by Ted Turner put together a fictional monkeypox exercise and then planned their response to it. It's very similar to Event 201, which was put on in 2019 by John Hopkins, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the World Economic Forum, in which they simulated a coronavirus pandemic before the actual coronavirus pandemic, brought together some of the world's most powerful people, and planned out their response response to what they would do if that happened. Very fascinating stuff. Do you think it's a good idea that they do stuff like this or do you find it sketchy? Scientists determined that this monkeypox virus was engineered. Now just to fill you in real quick if you don't know, that was an actual clip from a fictional monkeypox simulation they did a year ago in which the group that put on this fictional monkeypox simulation was indeed co-founded by Ted Turner. Everything I said in that video was right. Everything I said in that video can be fact-checked. It's provable. So when the fact-checkers emailed me 
they actually couldn't say that anything in that video was false, you're gonna be shocked at the tactics they used to try to cover up that video. Now, when they raided this false, covered it up, and started threatening my accounts with warnings, threatening to take away my monetization, I sent a really nasty message to the cover-up artists at Science Feedback to get a response. What was wrong about that? What was infactual? I didn't say anything wrong. And they emailed me, and I'm gonna quote them. They said, you have not specified which post you're referring to. We assume it is this post, where they linked that post, which contains an extract of a longer video and from which Anomaly invites viewers to watch the full video on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, BitShooter, Gab in the comment section, see screenshot. Interesting, so since my 100% true video was 100% accurate and I was careful and cautious about what I said, they obviously can't tell me that that video that they rated false wasn't true, because it is true and they know it's true. So they can't even say it's not true. What they said is, well, in the comments, you started promoting your other social media platforms. So we took it on ourselves to go over to your other video on other social media, including Rumble, Facebook, Gab, BitChute, and rate your true video false based on a link that you promoted in the comment section. Fascinating. What's crazy about that is they're not even right about that, even though that's a snaky, sneaky, completely dishonest move. When people see that false rating on Instagram, now they're going to think either obviously you guys are liars or they're going to think that I made a mistake. They're not going to know, oh, they rated that true video false because they went to his other video and watched like an hour long live stream. So why would you do that and think it's accurate or factual? It's not. But let's read on. Here's what they said to me. From which Anomaly invites viewers to watch the full video on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, or Gab in the comment section, see a screenshot. The full video contains false information as it incorrectly presented two tabletop exercises simulating a monkeypox and a coronavirus pandemic as evidence that the current monkeypox outbreak and the COVID-19 pandemic might have been planned, for instance. And this is where they quoted me. They planned their response of a coronavirus pandemic, and then six months later, they really rolled out the plan. So they made another mistake, an infactual mistake. I was talking about Event 201, which is a fictional pandemic simulation in 2019 by John Hopkins, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and World Economic Forum, where they literally did a fictional simulation about a coronavirus outbreak. So why were they doing a fictional simulation of a coronavirus outbreak? Even in the most innocent analysis of Event 201, it's because they're planning a response to a pandemic. They're not just doing it for fun or for kicks. They do it for the same reasons nurses go through nursing school and then they practice on a fake body before they practice on a real one. They want experience so when they really have a tragedy at their hands, they know how to deal with it and they're well equipped. So these imbeciles at science feedback aren't even right about what they're saying. I didn't say that this is proof that they planned a pandemic. Not at all. Even in the quote that they said, I said they planned their response in the same way a nurse prepares for her response for an actual injured victim before they work on a real one. That's what I said. I never said that that was evidence that they planned a monkeypox outbreak and evidence that they planned the COVID pandemic. I said, like they quoted, they planned their response to a pandemic. That's why they held Event 201. And that's why if you watch Event 201, a lot of the responses to that were very similar to the global responses of the COVID-19 pandemic. Because like I said, they were preparing for a similar scenario. Not exactly the same, but similar. And they rolled out a lot of the plans that they had planned because that's what they're doing, dummies, fact checker, liars. Just like a nurse, plan, then execute when something similar happens. It's not gonna be exactly the same. So I never even said that. And that's obviously very clear when they quoted me and I said, they planned their response of a coronavirus pandemic. That's exactly what Event 201 was. Fictional simulation where they plan a response to a pandemic to try to be better prepared for a real one. Now I'm gonna ask you before I keep reading the email science feedback, do you know that you're lying? Do you know that you're dishonest? Do you know that you fact-checked a 100% true video then responded to me that you started stalking my other social media to try to rate that true video false and in your stalking of my other videos that you made a mistake and weren't even right 0 for 1 so far in your attempt to take down my true video? Dummies, do you know that? I hope you do now because your logic just keeps getting worse. Now before we continue, you, I just want to remind you that quote that they quoted me, the one that I was telling the truth and they lied about it, that quote isn't from my Instagram video, which is also true. Once again, just to make it clear, I know this can be confusing. They stalked my other social media, went to my Facebook video, watched a long live stream and found that quote in a different live stream. So they think because I said that in a live stream on Facebook, they can say my true Instagram video is false. That's what makes all this so funny. And of course they weren't even 
even write about that. It's like beyond pathetic. I wanted to make that clear. Let's continue. Then they said the full video further claimed that Bill Gates and Ted Turner, co-founder of the Nuclear Threat Initiative, NTI, that ran the monkeypox tabletop exercise, think there's too many people on the planet and they want less people over time. Ted Turner and Bill Gates have been very clear about their theories about population growth over time. And after that, we've got to, we've got to stabilize the population. When I was born, no, there were So too, what's wrong with the population? I mean, we're too many people. That's what, that's why we have global warming. We have global warming because too many people are using too much stuff. But if they there have, were less people, they'd be using less stuff. It, and that's why I phrased it like that. I didn't say they just want to go around and kill everybody. I never said that. I said over time, they want there to be less people. Here's proof. And after that, we've got to, we've got to stabilize the population. When I was born, no, there so were So what's wrong with the population? I mean, we're too many people. That's what, that's why we have global warming. We have global warming because too many people are using too much stuff. But they if there were less people, they'd be using less but stuff. And Bill Gates makes this clear on multiple scenarios. He talks about it all the time. In fact, Elon Musk is a billionaire who disagrees with him and said this to Jack Ma. The, the, assuming that AI is fine, assuming that AI is, a, there's a benevolent future with AI, um, I think that the biggest problem the world will face in 20 years is population collapse. Collapse. I, agree. I want to emphasize this. The biggest issue in 20 years will be population collapse. Not explosion, collapse. The, it's very easy to see what the world will look like in 20 years because humans have a 20 year boot sequence. So like you say, okay, well, who was born last year? Okay, now you know what the world will look like in 20 years. It's that easy. I absolutely agree with that. The, uh, the population problem is going to be facing huge challenge. 1.4 billion people in China sounds a lot, but it, I think next 20 years we'll see this thing will bring big trouble to China and the population decreasing of the whole the speed of population decreasing is going to speed up yeah. and you call it collapse I, I agree with that. Accelerating collapse. Accelerating collapse. Accelerating collapse and then, and then uh, the, the, the common rebuttal is like well what about immigration like from where? He thinks population collapse is a problem and Bill Gates has plenty of times said that he thinks population growth over time is a problem. It's totally okay to have a scientific debate about that. I don't really care. I think Bill Gates has the right to think and say that. I came across articles that showed that the key thing you can do to reduce population growth is actually improve health. And that sounds paradoxical. You think, okay, so there's a perfect correlation that as you improve health within a half generation, the population growth rate goes down. And I think Elon Musk has the right to say and think the opposite. The, the, assuming that AI is fine, assuming that AI is, a, there's a benevolent future with AI, um, I think that the biggest problem the world will face in 20 years is population collapse. Collapse. I, agree. I want to emphasize this. The biggest issue in 20 years will be population collapse. Not explosion, collapse. But what you don't have the right to do science feedback is stalk my other videos for my Instagram video that's true and try to put a false label on the true video because I made another true statement about Bill Gates and Ted Turner on my Facebook and Rumble page. So you think that that's justification because you now made your second mistake about me to cover up my Instagram video. I was careful about what I said about Bill Gates and Ted Turner's ideology on population growth and people over time. I was so careful that even in the quote that that you wrote in the email to me quoting me saying that I'm actually right and you're wrong again. Let's keep reading. As we explained in our review, these claims are baseless conspiracy theories. What? Pandemic preparedness exercises aim to improve the global response to pandemics and don't constitute evidence of an orchestrated disease outbreak. Oh, now you're admitting that pandemic preparedness exercises aim to improve the global response to pandemics. Wow. Let's reread the quote that you quoted me that you said was wrong. I said they planned their response of a coronavirus pandemic. And you just wrote in the email, pandemic preparedness exercises aim to improve the global response. It's almost like we said the same exact thing. Thing. Except you said when I said it, it's a conspiracy theory. And then one paragraph later in your email, you said the same exact thing. Isn't that a little bit weird, science feedback? Do you know you're bad at your job? Do you know you're sloppy? Because I know you're sloppy. I don't think you could do news analysis like I do. I don't think you're as accurate as me. Why don't you try to do the news? I bet you can't because you're so crappy at fact checking. Thank God you're not in charge of actually disseminating information. Leave it to people who are better at it, like me. So they said, as we explained in our review, these claims are based 
baseless conspiracy theories. Pandemic preparedness exercises aim to improve the global response to pandemics and don't constitute evidence of an orchestrated disease outbreak. Similar exercises have been done in the past, portraying a variety of scenarios and different types of biological threats. The choice of the monkeypox virus was based on its known risk of causing outbreaks like the one we are currently experiencing. Okay, so why does that allow you to rate my true video false again? Because you made a mistake? Let's keep reading. The potential of the Instagram post to mislead viewers appears evident in the comments from several users who understood Anomaly's message to mean that the monkeypox virus was engineered or the outbreak was planned. Here are just a few examples. Oh, so now when I get thousands of comments, guys, thousands of comments every single day on Instagram, thousands of comments on most of my posts, it's now my fault when anybody else disagrees with me or says something else or thinks or has a theory that I don't believe. Now it's my fault that everybody comments in the comment section and doesn't completely say exactly what I say. These people are full-blown psychopaths at science feedback. If they think that this is fact-checking, really? Stalking my Rumble page and my Facebook page? Making multiple mistakes? Let's read the comments that they had a problem with. They said, Carla P S L E Y said, sketchy as hell. They plan every one of those things. They cause them all on purpose. Problem, reaction, solution. Hans72589 said, I mean, what else needs to be done to prove that there is a group of wealthy people waging biological warfare on the population? Heather Fit Tip said, they always tell us before it happens, so good at predictions, or is it? Are you guys going to CNN and National Geographic and Washington Post and stalking all of their comments on Facebook and Instagram? And if anybody in the comment section says something that you deem false, you're allowed to put a false label on their Instagram post? Is this how you operate with everyone else? I bet not. Would you do that to Pfizer, Moderna? Would you do that to literally anyone? I mean, how pathetic are you, Science Feedback? They're quoting comments in my comment section, of which I got thousands, to say, if anybody posts a conspiracy theory in the comments, you must have misled them. Oh yeah, because I'm a dictator and everybody's got to think exactly what I say all the time. No, you complete weasel scums. People in the comment section are allowed to disagree. They're allowed to say theories that I don't agree with because I don't live in an authoritarian dictatorship where all my followers have to think and say exactly what I believe. In fact, I didn't even read those comments because unlike you idiots, people actually like me and comment often and I don't see 99% of them. And if there is something that I disagree with, I don't delete it. Can you believe that they emailed me this and thought it was a good idea to show me how their mind works. So let's keep reading. They're 0 for 3. They can't say my Instagram video wasn't true because it is. So they said that they stalk me on my other social media because I've been marketing it in the comment section. Then they made a false claim about what I said about pandemic responses. And then a paragraph later said the exact same thing that they quoted me saying and said was a conspiracy theory. Then they tried to claim that Bill Gates and Ted Turner don't have opinions about population growth over time and how fast humans are multiplying and ways to to combat overpopulation when there's literally article and video evidence all over the internet that I can provide and I will provide. And then they chose three random comments on a video that has thousands of comments and said that I must have misled them if they said that. Let's keep reading. Then they said in your email, you claimed we do accurate work and that we simply accurately covered the 2021 fictional monkeypox simulation and accurately spoke about it. We aren't saying they plan the virus. These claims are disingenuous, they said. It is impossible for you to be unaware of the fact that your Instagram post invites viewers to watch a video that does contain the false claims that we covered in our review. The post says, I have the full video in the link in my bio. You can see it on my Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, or Gab in full. Based on the comments of some Instagram users, it is clear that they did go on to access that false content. They quoted Huey Media saying, Ted Turner, the guy that's literally on camera talking about how we're overpopulated and there's too many people suddenly wants to help save us from monkeypox. Sorry, I'm not buying it. What's weird is what he's saying is on video. And after that, we've got to, we've got to stabilize the population. When I was born, no, there were so too, what's wrong with the population? I mean, we're too many people. That's what. That's why we have global warming. We have global warming because too many people are using too much stuff. But if there were less people, they'd be using less but stuff. It's like these people at Science Feedback are just exaggerating all the time about what everybody's saying and then fighting the straw man that they exaggerated about. Once again, keep in mind that this isn't my comment. This is one of over 1,400 comments, but I guess because Huey Media said, I'm not buying it, that's my fault? Left-wingers are allowed to not trust or like Elon Musk or Donald Trump. Of course you could question those billionaires or Republican donors or whoever, but if you ever disagree with the philanthropy of Bill Gates and Ted Turner or have any questions about it at all, not only will you be punished, 
but you will get the person who you posted it on punished. These fact checkers are out of control. Are you reading how pompous and smug these people are when they're making so many errors? These claims are disingenuous. It is impossible for you to be unaware of the fact that your Instagram posted about you guys have no self-awareness, no self-accountability. You called what I said a conspiracy theory and then said it yourself in different wording the next paragraph over. You guys are imbeciles. You're so bad at your job. I'm so glad that you told me how you think because I know that you're not thinking. And it's absolutely embarrassing that you made this many mistakes in one email to cover up the mistake that you made on Instagram. To read the rest of the email, they said, in summary, the Instagram post misleads viewers who come away with the false understanding that there's evidence supporting the claim that the monkeypox outbreak was planned. Oh, in summary, the Instagram post just misleads people in the comments to say different things. So even though what I said was true, it just made them think other things, right? Is that how the media works now? This country is doomed if these fact checkers aren't held accountable. And I'm talking peacefully and I'm talking legally, all love, all peace. I don't want you to misconstrue it because I try to hold them accountable and they start claiming I'm threatening them because I said, I'm going to do something about it. It's not a threat. That's a promise. Nothing physical, nothing illegal, all peaceful. Just like when I call Sprint or T-Mobile if they make a mistake and try to get a refund. It's called customer service. These people are throwing their hands up and playing the victim because they think they're just authoritarians. Oh my gosh, I mean, what do you mean by that? I mean, you guys lie constantly. You're evil, you cover up information, you make constant mistakes, and then you play the victim when I say that I'm gonna do something about it. So to wrap it up, they said, in summary, the Instagram post misleads viewers who come away with a false understanding that there is evidence supporting the claim that the monkeypox outbreak was planned. The post directs users to content promoting conspiracy theories, which we debunked in our fact check. Last but not least, you should be aware that Facebook policy regarding appeals specifically warns publishers not to use threatening language and fact checking partners are under no obligation to process such appeals. Sincerely, the science feedback team. This is what I meant when I said I'm going to do something about it. I showed you the truth. I told the truth in my Instagram video. Every fact check you try to make on my Facebook and Rumble video is wrong. You're terrible at your job. And I meant exactly what I said. If you don't take the false label off my true video, I'm going to do something about it. And this is what I did do. So sorry that you perceive somebody actually trying to tell the truth about your false, terrible work. I'm sorry that you perceive that as a threat. It's not. Mark Zuckerberg, are you aware that your Instagram fact checkers are rating true videos false by blaming comments, going to other social media if you market other social media, watching the whole video and desperately trying to pluck at something to cover up a video on a whole different platform? Do you realize this is what they're doing? Does anybody realize what the fact checkers are doing? At this point, they're almost like an intelligence community. They get to just do whatever they want. I mean, they almost have more power than the president and Congress and Senate. Is anybody fact checking the fact checkers? I don't think so. And I I think it's why they're this bad at their job, they're this smug, and they never get held accountable. It's insane. And before we move on, I just have to say this, because I know they're always looking for this angle. All peaceful, all legal. I don't want anybody to do anything except tell the truth to these people. Lead with love, lead with light, lead with facts, and let science feedback, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube know that we caught them covering up the truth, and we caught them acting like little Napoleons, running rampant with their power and censorship. Now, before this video is over, I just want to get to my YouTube suspension. So YouTube went back a long time. This is months or over a year old. Some video I had where I read a Bill Gates mainstream media fact check aloud and talked about Sweden. They said that YouTube doesn't allow claims about COVID-19 vaccinations that contradict expert consensus from local health authorities or the World Health Organization. They responded to me and said, we have reviewed the video you reappealed and determined that it is in violation of our community guidelines. YouTube does not allow content that spreads medical misinformation that contradicts the World Health Organization. What are they considering medical misinformation? What did I say that contradicted the World Health Organization? I have no idea. They won't tell me. I just keep asking and asking, getting hundreds and thousands of retweets on Twitter, begging, please tell me. I would love to know what I did wrong, so maybe I can't make the same mistake. What did I do that contradicts the World Health Organization? But here's the weird thing. Like I said, the CDC contradicts the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization isn't a dictator monopoly that controls all science. They're a global organization that constant local authorities are disagreeing with, scientists are disagreeing with, and it's okay to question them. In fact, early on in March 3rd, 2020, they said World Health Organization says coronavirus death rate is 3.4% globally higher than previously thought. Major media disagreed with that. And as the World Health Organization was saying that the death rate was a 3.4, just a couple weeks later, I did a simple math equation in my head that a third grader could do and came to the conclusion that that number couldn't possibly be right. Take a look.
What's going on everybody? We're gonna do some very simple math in a second, but first we're gonna talk about two false predictions that a lot of these bureaucrats have been making that they tell us are experts and that have to be believed no matter what. So if you don't allow people without uh, symptoms to get tested, and for a while they were making it hard for people with symptoms to get tested, it means that the death rate they're giving us is higher and in reality, it's probably much lower. This is all very simple, very elementary school math that I just wanted to bring into the equation because I don't trust people that won't explain that. Yes, we're having more, but yes, we're testing more. Yes, you know, we went from not testing, so we had no cases. That doesn't mean that there were no cases. They can't even prove right now. Two months ago, they couldn't even prove that it's transmitted between humans. Now they can't even prove that this hasn't been here for a couple months, a year. We don't really know because we weren't testing for it. But I guess that's who YouTube is. They will take away everything that somebody worked over a decade, blood, sweat, and tears into this platform. Take it all away for a strike going back six months or a year on a video where I'm not even sure what I said that they're mad at because they still haven't told me. Yet they would never put a strike on Joe Biden, Rochelle Walensky, or Rachel Maddow's channel from actually being wrong. But when I'm honest or say something that allegedly the who doesn't agree with, I have to lose all my momentum, my live streaming capabilities. It's an absolute joke. Please share this video far and wide. If you have a news outlet, feel free to publish an article about it. I don't need any attention and I don't want any attention. I don't ever ask for favors, but I want these fact checkers to stop persecuting honest journalists, honest content creators, and people like myself, independent people that have worked their asses off for decades to build a little tiny piece of the pie, having not nearly as much money and influence and power as a lot of these other people, but we work so much harder for it by ourselves without a big media corporation, without a budget, and you take it all away from us for your mistake. And when I call you out for your mistake, you don't even care. So something needs to be done about this peacefully, legally, but accurately. Science Feedback, who were those smug people lying about my Instagram video and lying about my Facebook video doing a terrible job, apparently is a nonprofit organization registered in France. In America, I'm being censored by dummies in France or an organization based out of France? We need to let YouTube, Facebook, Science Feedback, and all these fact checkers see this video and know that we know that they're lying. We know you're wrong. I can't speak for everybody. Some people are sloppy. Some people make mistakes. I'm not saying everything you do is wrong, but when it comes to me, you've taken a lot from me. You've tried to ruin a lot of what I've built. You've tried to cover up and make me look bad over what? And make it look like I'm some sort of threat or false news reporter over quotes from the CDC, an NBC article, a New York Times cutout, a Fox News guy quoting the CDC in an under minute long video about a monkeypox simulation. Oh yeah, remember this one, Facebook? I posted an NBC news report that literally quoted the CDC saying at the time, 94 4% of COVID-19 deaths had underlying medical conditions, and you punished my page saying, false claim shared by President Trump that only 6% of CDC reported deaths are from COVID-19 is based on flawed, oh, it's our friends from France again, science feedback. They're so unhinged with Trump derangement syndrome that they're covering up CDC quotes and NBC news articles because President Trump hurt their feelings. Show me on the doll where President Trump said that, and also show me on the doll why President Trump saying something has to punish my Facebook page and attempt to ruin my career, you utter fraudulent evil scum. Who's going to fact check the fact checkers? I am. I did. And I just wanted this video to be made for historical accuracy. You might have this dictator-like collaboration with Meta. You might have garbage customer service where you don't care if you're wrong like YouTube. You could have all the money. You could have all the power. You could have all the control. But what you'll never have is the truth on your side. What you'll never have are the facts on your side. And I just accurately fact-checked the fact-checkers and anybody that's an honest, decent person can see that they're out of control, that they're dishonest, and they're completely shameless about their inaccuracy. God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. And if you'd like to support me, sign up to my free email list at stayintouchwithme.com. That's stayintouchwithme.com. The link will be in the bio, 100% free. I rarely send out emails, but I would love to have your email. Telegram, Dream Rare Chat. 
t.me slash dream rare chat or dream rare chat on telegram and i do have a patreon patreon.com slash rare talk because of the demonetization and constant attacks on other social media it's nice to have some sort of a subscription because although i keep working harder and growing my base because of the dishonest fact checkers and the dishonest censorship without subscriptions and other things i don't know that i'd still be able to work as hard as i do so thank you so much for that patreon.com slash rare talk and if you like hoodies like this or shirts made in the usa 100% made in the USA, dreamrare.com. I have these God bless hats, these shirts. Appreciate it so, so much. I don't even have assistance or a team, I have to work 30 times as hard because all these social platforms that I'm on are constantly lying about me and working against me. So it just drives me to work that much harder. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for sharing this video. And please, from the bottom of my heart and soul, science feedback, Facebook, YouTube, address this video because it's one thing to have political disagreements. It's one thing to call out people who are lying and do a better job of being accurate, but this is clearly not what these people are doing and they have absolutely no shame in their game. Have a beautiful day and God bless America.